please address eh, to the to the presenters whom you want to yes uh, brother this brother first and then number two and prof number three yeah please my question is to brother Rafik um, this it's alongside the comment I made yesterday uh, uh, concerning um, the theory that we should use Dembski's information theory model. Um, so what you said at the end is it makes a lot of sense that you know these people do these actions, they're interpreted in two different ways. Well, let's ask them what, what is their intention, right? Um, in, in, in engaging in this practice, which I think you know, makes a lot of sense. But why do we have to go to cultural anthropology to you know, ask such a common sense question? I mean, we already knew in Nemal Amal bin Niyat from the Prophet Sallallahu why do we have to um, borrow Clifford Gears model to you know, understand a debate between Muslims? Second one? Please, we call it the uh, uh, question first. Uh, thank you. I have uh, just two questions for uh, Ustad Munir. Um, the first one is that if, if philosophy is, by definition, a priori, it seems, uh, Burhani and not, uh, not Burhani, I assume that Burhani means uh, with some degree of certainty, and Hijaji is kind of dialectical or argumentative, not, not certain. Uh, presumably, he arrived at that conclusion that conclusion using uh, language and logic. So the very statement that it's Hijaji and not Burhani is also uh, Hijaji, in which case it's uh, like suspect in itself. Uh, I assume he wants some certain certainty for us to accept that notion of philosophy. And then the second, there was the critique of the borrowing of concepts from other philosophers, this kind of taqlid. Uh, but <coughs> in your talk, you mentioned uh, three borrowings that he makes himself. The notion of philosophy as the fabrication of concepts from Deleuze, the notion of uh, philosophy as Socratic questioning, and the notion of philosophy as critique uh, from Kant. And so it seems that he falls into the same uh, problem that he accuses others of. My own comment would be, <coughs> it doesn't really seem to matter where you get your concepts from. I think uh, when it comes to philosophy, what matters is, are, the, are, are your arguments valid and sound wherever you get them from? So thank you. Thank you, Munir. Uh, I just want to ask you, how can you compare between uh, Taha Abdul Rahman and uh, Muhammad Arkun? Comparison, what, what do you think? How can you compare? Abdurrahman and Muhammad Arkun. Any more? <coughs> Any more questions? Yes, please. Uh, two questions. First to Mr. Rafik. Uh, when we take the approach of Gilbert Ryle and Clifford Geertz, I'm afraid uh, implementing the method from other discipline into the method of Ta'abudi is somehow neglecting the, our own me uh, method in fiqh and also al fiqh So, for example, we have this idea of al-ghayah la tubarir al-wasilah. Ends does not justify the means. So, perhaps you can uh, elaborate further on uh, using the method of understanding the context and intention. Does it contradict with also al fiqh method? Second to uh, Mr. Munir, uh, you're saying about Philosophical nature is hijaji, not burhan. And uh, uh, he's criticizing the Arab philosophers b using of what loosey language or flowery allegorical language. We have two kind of schools in Islamic philosophy. The first is Ibn Rushd, who argues that philosophy should be written in a burhani way. While we have in another schools, people like Ibn Tufail and Ibn Sina written philosophy some part of it in an allegorical way. You have Hay ibn Yaqzan in Ibn Tufail, and you have Ibn Sina Risala Hay ibn Yaqzan, Absal wa Salaman, and you have Al Ghazali as well, Mishkatul Anwar, uh, which is an allegorical interpretation of uh, Surah An Nur. So uh, perhaps you can give comments on that. Thank you. 
Any more? Oh yeah, please. At the. Uh, I I I get feeling there's a lot of uh, honestly complain about 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 about, about borrowing from Damsky or from Gears. I mean I mean the point is that uh, unless you can show that uh, that uh, that that borrowing is wrong. Okay okay. Uh, un unless I mean the whole point is whether uh, Damsky concept of so and so is wrong or invalid or inapplicable. Then, okay, if you just re reject an approach or method just because it comes from somebody else, then uh, then classic uh, then uh, that same argument can uh, be, be applied against uh, okay against classical classical kalam because kalam borrowed a lot from the Greeks like logic and from from Plato and from Aristotle. Right, and, and in fact, in and and in the Matalib, we uh, we read for Rossi say al 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 ima al aflatun, see, <laughs> and stuff like that. So, I think I I I I think the point is that unless we can show that a concept, whether borrowed or indigenous, uh, unless we can show that concept is uh, invalid or inapplicable or totally uh, absurd. Then we have no grounds to uh, to reject those concept me okay merely on the basis that it's come from outside the scope outside uh, the tradition, but the tradition as, as such has been very um, critically integrative, cri I mean, critically integrative of all concepts that are uh, uh, that uh, uh, that can be shown to be sound. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, for the first round, uh, I gave you around three minutes each. Three minutes each, yeah? Brother Rafik and brother. Okay, thanks for asking questions. First, I thank you, my friend from Turkey asked it. Whether we are going to ask what their intention is, no. It is, my attempt is that, uh, uh, to avoid unnecessary debates and hypes regarding the, the tech fear on the base. Then before going to attribute or judge uh, others' action, and it is Islamic or non-Islamic, we have to do some researches, that is integration, interpretation. Also, in, uh, I cited so many examples uh, from Islamic history that uh, intention is the prime thing, not uh, the overt behavior what is manifest in the actor's behavior. That is not the yardstick to measure their iman or not. But what the, what the actor intended, what the actor, by going to a signed, a signed tomb and by asking uh, some other sign, by calling by the name of the other saints other than Allah, what his intention is. If he is not uh, considering them or believing them, they are not uh, Rab or Ilah, then there is no problem. That is my argument. I think uh, now you are clear. Th that, that's clear to me, and I agree, but w why bring in gears? I mean, you can say uh, what you're uh, saying without talking uh, about gears, a, right? That's the same question we asked by that guy. Okay. Along with uh, the uh, theory of the gears, I also put, uh, brought so many examples from the Islamic history, Quran, Hadith. By incorporating all these things, I argue that this is the best way to uh, give the meanings for the actions of the people. Not only on the basis of the, solely on the basis of the Clifford Gears. Along with that, uh, I mentioned that the incident of Safa Marwa and also the uh, putting the Hazrulas with the case of the Hazrulas. In all these cases, the, in all these cases, what considered is that the intention, their intention, not the overt practices, but is manifested to us on the basis of the opposite. Hadar bi hadha akbar, Ibrahim Nabi Salam. His intention was uh, not that, the sun is not the God. But I think there is no danger in applying these types of laws into the studies of the sociology or uh, anthropology of religion. Along with it, we have to take some uh, examples from Islamic history also. 
I just told him and said the case of the Gifford Gears, along with that we took so many, the, uh, to, to what extent we could allege attribute that fit to others. I exempted so many quotings from our ulama. Along with that there was so many hadith and quoted Quran. By incorporating all these things, I argue that it is the best way to uh, interpret it than explain. Brother Munir, can you respond to the uh, questions? Three questions here. Uh, as for demonstration, okay, I, uh, as I, uh, I shall put it, okay, demonstration is that demonstration is about formal, uh, for, for, for formal, uh, is about formal logic, right? So he said, whatever, whatever is uh, uh, constructed in natural language isn't necessarily or should necessarily be of a dialectical nature uh, because language is because of its embodied uh, embeddedness and it is embodiedness right it, because it is embodied it should be in dialectical dialectical language one of the philosophers to uh, yeah going back to allegories and uh, and little uh, fail and Ibn Rushd, it says that Ibn Rushd seems to be seems to be the only or just one of the uh, exceptional philosophers would uh, uh, Emphasize, emphasize that uh, philosophy is should be burhanic and dial and what is whatever is dialectic is not yaqini, and it says okay all of the philosophy philosophical postulates premises have to be it cannot be uh, demonstrative cannot be burhanic right they are of a consta of a, uh, premises are of constative nature that is taqririya. and it's, uh, what is taqriri can be uh, can be can be uh, transcended or can be changed or substituted by other taqriri uh, taqriri premise so uh, ibn rushd you should look at the, the, the his problem or just his tackling of this problem of demonstration in the context of his engagement of contemporary intellectuals who seem to uh, call back or just uh, uh, invoke uh, the the peripatetic philosophers uh, mainly abd muhammad abd who just would invoke Ibn Rushd as a paradigm of uh, universality of uh, and, and the rationality of the philosophical discourse. So, uh, as the cons as as for the consumption of concepts, uh, maybe it is my fault because I, I didn't expand on that. He never uh, he never assumes or never argues that we shouldn't borrow concepts from the others, and he does himself. Is what we should do rather is he, what he is against rather is blind consumption of. Other intel uh, of other other the other concept. We said before we borrow concept. It says that the concept is composed of. We should know that the compo com uh, concept is composed of two elements or two components. The janib uh, al that is pure expression or representation, and janib al that is metaphorical part. And what we tend what muqallida tend to do is just they borrow now from Western philosophers the concept, borrowing both the representational aspect and the, meta the hidden or com implicit metaphorical aspect. And they, with, uh, uh, with that, uh, in this way, they borrow the residues of uh, the, the, the cultures of, uh, of, 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 of the other. It says we have to borrow the, 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 the representational aspect, but build our metaphorical aspects uh, our own. For example, he gives many, many examples. Of, uh, he himself deals many with several concepts. Uh, for example, uh, modernity, he devoted one book for one one uh, single book for uh, the science, it says science of ta'til mafahim. This is which is absent from uh, the minds, or just which is not tackled in it adequately by uh, Western by uh, Muslims. Okay, both uh, philosophers and and other ways. So this is what we should build, right? He says that language is or the concept is like a human being, is a being, is like being, which is composed of tabaqat. Uh, now we should dig deep through the strata of language because language bears the residue of tradition, bears the residue of our uh, own uh, being. Okay, Heidegger uses to say, or used to say, uh, the language is the house of being. So we have to, each culture, if it, has to, if it, if it, if it cannot philosophize authentically unless it goes back. It goes back to the roots of language and and uh, explores the etymological or builds istilahi 
or philosophy or conceptual uh, problem, uh, 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 philosophical conceptual aspect on the me, me, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, etymological on the etymological aspect. Uh, as for Arkun, uh, uh, he deals with Arkun as far as I know in two in two uh, in two different on two different occasions. In one in his book Tajdid. Uh, الحوار وتجديد الكلام and uh, the other one when he in his uh, book The Soul of Modernity in which he uh, he tackles the problem of touches on the problem of uh, the hermeneutics of the Quran so, but since I'm not knowledgeable about Arkun I cannot uh, answer this question okay because I personally but I think he his take on both Arkun and Jabri is that they they approached uh, tradition in an atomistic way, and they pick and choose from tradition. It says tradition is uh, without without uh, he, he, they they are delving into contents of tradition and uh, uh, criticizing this and doing that and applying uh, mechanism methodological aspects of which are borrowed, borrowed from Western hermeneutics, which there is no wrong in that. But we should first, they said that first, methodologically speaking, they should, they should subject those methodological mecha these, these mechanisms and methodologies to critique before they uh, apply them to 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 uh, to, uh, to to tradition, and I said, for example, Abid al-Jabri, Muhammad Abid al-Jabri keeps repeating once again, time and again, that uh, philosophy is Burhanic and mutakallimun. Uh, uh, he called uh, 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 yeah, al-Janib al-Khatabi. So uh, you know, Muhammad Abid al-Jabri writes uh, devised tradition. He says in tradition can be divided into three aqools, al-aql al-Arabi. This is the rational rational, which is demonstrative reason, which is uh, represented by al-Falasifa. The rational, the irrational, the, the rational irrational, which is al-aql bayani, and with tafsir, ahl kalam, etc. These are rational, irrational. So the irrational try to rationalize, they rationalized what is irrational, and the irrational irrational, the irrational, uh, the irrational irrational, which is mutasawifa, uh, uh, which he uh, he uh, under which he subsumes uh, esotericism and uh, mysticism and mutasawifu uh, and philosophical philosophy, etc., etc. So Taha Rahman says no, this is not the way we should. And he says that Taha that Muhammad uh, Jabir himself writes in uh, Hijaji and Ibn Rushd himself, who keep talking about the Burhan, etc., and he uh, dissects. Uh, parts from uh, Ibn Rushd's books and to prove that Ibn Rushd himself writes in Hijaji, right? He cannot help escaping the Hijaji and the Khatabi uh, argumentative way and never can never uh, 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 can never uh, uh, be committed to, 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 to demonstration or to demonstrative uh, language.